Venus de Milo, History Timeline by Elizabeth Bauman, October 29th, 2017, World Cultures, Mrs. Bartlett, Module 6. Table of Contents, Study Question, What is Venus de Milo? Who is the woman? Timeline, Creation, Ancient Greece, 1920s, and today. Conclusion, Work Cited. Study Question, what did the statue mean to society in the past, and what is its significance today? Is it a religious or artistic cultural expression? What is Venus de Milo? Venus de Milo is a statue of a woman, carved mainly out of two large blocks of marble. The top half of the woman's body, her torso and head, is one block, and the lower half of her body, legs covered in draping, is made out of the second block. Her arms are also carved separately and attached to her body, as is her left foot, part of the hem of her skirt, and the base on which she stands. She is without arms, as they were broken off sometime, and the possible arms were lost sometime in the 1800s and have never been found. She is slightly larger than life, over six feet tall. The statue would have worn metal jewelry, keeping with the tradition of the women of that time and place. The jewellery probably included bracelets, necklaces, earrings, and even a headband on her hair. She is clothed from waist down, though her left foot peeks from the folds of her skirt-like garment. The carving of the garment is an example of extraordinary artistic ability, considering the way the fabric falls and drapes over her legs especially. Who is the woman? It is unknown who the statue is of. There are many theories and many options, but really, the statue is simply a beautiful depiction of a half-clothed woman. Because many of the group's sculptures at that time were of gods, it is realistic to assume that she is some sort of goddess, but which one is impossible to know for sure. Her arms are missing, so it is unknown if she carried anything that might have identified her. She may even have been part of a bigger sculpture. Here are two of the most popular theories about her identity. Many scholars believe the statue depicts the Greek goddess Aphrodite, who was also known as Venus in the ancient Roman world. The fact that she is partially naked and quite curvy suggests Aphrodite, since this goddess was often shown without any or with very little clothing. She was the goddess of love, beauty, and children, which may explain why the figure was sculpted as, as she was. Other historians believe that the statue could be of Aphrodite, taking into account that the statue was found on the island of Milo and that the people who lived on Milo worshipped the sea goddess Aphrodite. This is a famous painting of Venus or Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. Venus de Milo was created on one of the islands in the Greek Cyclades archipelago, maybe even on the island of Milo itself. It was crafted sometime around 100 BCE, possibly even as early as 130 BCE. This was during the mid to late Hellenistic time period. It is believed that the statue was sculpted by Alexandros of Antioch. There is documentation from the 1800s that describes a plinth, now lost, that came with the statue, saying that the statue was the work of Alexandros of Antioch. The plinth has not been seen since 1821. Cultural Significance The statue certainly had a deep cultural meaning for the people in 100 BCE and in the following centuries, but what kind of meaning and how the people reacted to the statue would have depended greatly on the identity of the woman depicted by the statue. It is almost certain that the woman is some goddess or deity, but which great goddess would have made a difference and changed people's attitudes? For example, if it is a statue of Diana, also known as Artemis, Virgins and young girls would have honored her especially, since Diana was the virgin goddess of the hunt. Or, say for example that the woman is Aphrodite, then the older married women and lovers and mothers would have given her great respect, since Aphrodite was the goddess of love, beauty, and procreation. There is no denying Venus de Milo would have been perceived as a work of art, but the intent behind her creation would have been to honor whatever goddess she was representing. Discovery. The statue was discovered on April 8, 1820 in a farmer's field on the island of Melos, which is an island off the coast of Greece in the Cyclades archipelago. It turned out that the farmer's field contained some of the ruins of the ancient Greek city Milo. This is a map of the Cyclades archipelago in Greece. Discovery and Interest. 
Right away, Venus de Milo drew a great deal of interest, especially from the French. At this point in time, there was very little religious or spiritual significance attached to the sculpture, since Europe was mainly Christian, Catholic, and Protestant. On the other hand, the statue's artistic and historical importance was huge. A French naval officer named Oliver Vertier, stationed at Milo at the time, became very involved with the discovery. Soon enough, another French officer, Jules Dumont de Urville, sent word to even higher-ranking French officials about the discovery. There were numerous people who wanted to own the statue, and the French had to go through some challenges before they eventually bought it. King Louis XVIII In 1821, Venus de Milo was shipped to France and given as a gift to King Louis XVIII. King Louis was the ruling monarch of a much diminished France, taking the throne after the French Revolution and the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars. As can be seen in this map, by 1820, France was no longer a large, powerful empire as it had been under the rule of Napoleon. The Louvre One year later, in 1822, King Louis XVIII gave the statue to the Louvre, which is the largest and most extensive art museum in Paris, as well as in all of France. Significance to the French Interestingly enough, even though the statue was acknowledged as an amazing artistic work and an important historical artifact, in 1822 its most important function was social. For the French, the statue was a symbol of their prestige and cultural superiority, no matter that it was actually created in Greece and was originally a spiritual expression. Following the Napoleonic Wars, the French were forced to return land and other possessions they took to their original countries. One of the artistic works they had to return to Italy was the Medici Venus, which had been one of the most important pieces of art in the Louvre. With the acquisition of the Venus de Milo, the French gained another important piece of work, art, and so they promoted the statue as the apex of Greek artistic expression. In an attempt to make the Venus de Milo even more important, the French removed the plinth stating that the statue was created by Alexandros of Antioch, and instead said that Perixteles was the creator, moving the dating back about 300 years. For the French in the 1800s, the statue was more about social status than proper historical or artistic significance. Even though there were many underlying social and political reasons for advertising the statue as exceptional, there were artists who truly believed it was a wonderful piece of art. The beauty of the woman, along with her grace and sensuality, not to mention the outstanding workmanship in her creation, truly did make her something for the French to be proud of owning. Today, Venus de Milo is still in the Louvre Museum of Paris today. She is part of an exhibit found on the visitor trail called Masterpieces. Part of what makes Venus de Milo so famous today is the very fact that so little is known about her. Ever since she was rediscovered almost 200 years ago, scientists, artists, and historians have been fascinated not just by what they know about her, but what they don't know. Mystery attracts people, and many artists, historians, and scientists study Venus de Milo to discover more about her. They now think that the French actually found Venus de Milo's arm, but it was discarded as the 19th century artists did not believe it was actually part of the statue. Historians and artists have been able to study other ancient Greek statues today, and they are able to surmise, based on French documentation, that her hand was actually found, but then lost again. Conclusion Today, Venus de Milo is one of the most famous pieces of ancient Greek art. It is especially interesting artistically because, though it was created in the late Hellenistic period, it reflects the traditions of many other artistic times, including High Classical Greek and Late Classical Greek. Today, the statue is seen as a fascinating historical and artistic work worthy of study.